In this video, we will be making four servings of a Thai-style coriander chicken stir-fry with rice. To start, let's prepare our ingredients. The first thing to prepare is our blend or paste. To make this, I have eight cloves of garlic. I am simply going to smash them with the side of my knife and set them aside. Next, we have four red chilies. These are a little spicy, but not too spicy. I like using these because it gives a good amount of chili flesh without too much heat. However, you can use as many chilies of whatever type that you like. And if you don't want any spice at all, you can use a capsicum or bell pepper. I'm just going to take the stems off the chilies, cut them into smaller pieces, and set them aside with the garlic. And I am also going to add some shallots to our blend. Here I have six small shallots. If your shallots are bigger, you can use less of them. Or you could even use one large brown or red onion instead of shallots. Whatever you use, peel them and get them into similar sized pieces to the garlic and chilies. To do this, I just needed to cut a few of the bigger pieces down into smaller chunks. Now we can create our blend. To do this, I am going to use this hand processor because I think it is the quickest and easiest way. Although this can be done in a mortar and pestle, an electric processor or blender, or you could just chop everything finely. With my hand blender, not everything will fit in all at once, so I'm going to blend the garlic and chilies first. Then, once it is roughly chopped, I added half the shallots and blended again. Then I added the rest of the shallots and blended everything. Once I got a paste that I was happy with, I transferred it to a bowl and set it aside. Next, let's deal with the coriander. Here I have a fresh bunch of coriander, to which I will separate the stems from the leaves. I cut the stems into smaller pieces and added it to the processor, Blend it until it is a similar consistency to the rest of the paste and add it to the same bowl. For the leaves, I just cut them a few times and put them in a separate bowl for use later. You could also use dried coriander leaves instead of fresh if you have it on hand. Next, let's make our sauce. To a bowl, add one tablespoon of sugar, three tablespoons of light soy sauce or fish sauce, one tablespoon of oyster sauce, one teaspoon of chicken stock powder, one teaspoon of dark soy sauce, and two tablespoons of water. Then just mix it all to combined and our sauce is ready. And lastly, let's prepare our chicken. Here I am using six chicken thighs. However, you could also use chicken breast, a combination of breast and thighs, or you could just use store-bought ground chicken instead. Although I think chicken thighs taste the best for this dish. First, I patted the surface of the chicken to remove any additional moisture. Then with each thigh, I removed additional fat, connective tissue, or leftover bone and cartilage. Then I cut the thigh into big chunks and set it aside. You don't have to be too precise with the chopping at this stage, because it is all going to get chopped up again. Once all the chicken has been cleaned and cut, I began chopping everything down. The best way I find to do this is to chop across in one direction, then rotate 90 degrees and chop across in that direction. Then once you have gone through a few times from both angles, scoop and fold the chicken back to the center and repeat. A cleaver works best for this because of its weight, but a regular chef's knife also works. This took me about three to four minutes of chopping before I got to the consistency I wanted. If you don't want to do this by hand, an electric food processor will get you the same result in about 10 seconds. Also, you don't even have to do this step at all. You can leave this in bigger chunks if that is what you prefer. Whatever you decide, put it in a bowl and set it aside with our other ingredients. Now we can begin cooking. This dish comes together quickly, so we want to have everything prependo before starting to cook. Here I have my wok set up on the stove with my ingredients right next to it for easy access. When you are set up, heat the wok on maximum heat until it is smoking. Once smoking, add one tablespoon of high heat cooking oil around the edges and swirl to coat the surface of the wok. Next, add the chicken and spread it around in a single layer. Let this sit for one to two minutes to get some good browning. Once you think you have some nice color on the chicken, mix it around and let it sit again for another one to two minutes. Repeat this a few times until the chicken is cooked through. At some point, you will probably notice the chicken release liquid and it pulls at the bottom. When this happens, let the chicken sit without stirring for a couple of minutes until the liquid evaporates. Only once the liquid is gone will the chicken start to sear again. Once the chicken is cooked, add the blend and stir everything through for a few minutes or so. At this point, you should start to smell the fragrances of all the aromatics. You might also have some food sticking to the bottom of the wok, but don't worry too much about this, as it will all come off once we add our sauce. And once the blend has been incorporated, we can add our sauce. 
Just make sure to mix the sauce first because some of the undissolved sugar will probably have pulled at the bottom. Now we just need to cook the sauce down for a minute or two until it has reduced to your desired consistency. I like the sauce to caramelize and coat the chicken, but not to have any pooling of the sauce. Once you are there, turn off the heat and add the coriander leaves. Stir this through and the residual heat will wilt it down a little. Taste for seasoning and adjust if needed. I added a little more salt to mine. Once you are happy with the seasoning, the coriander chicken is done. Finally, we just need to make some rice to serve it with. I'm using two cups of jasmine rice for four servings, so half a cup per serving. Add this to a pot and rinse it with water. I like to rinse my rice three to four times or until the water is significantly less cloudy. Strain the rice and add it back to the pot with two and a quarter cups of water, using the same cup you use to measure the rice. I also like to add a pinch of salt to my rice, but that is optional. Put this on a stove and turn the heat to high. Once it comes to a boil and there is visible steam, put the lid on, turn the heat to low, and set a timer for 12 minutes. After 12 minutes, turn the heat off but leave the lid on, and let it sit for another 10 minutes. And after 10 minutes, we should have some perfectly cooked rice. A good sign is if there is no rice stuck to the bottom of the pot. Fluff the rice up to help any extra steam escape, and let it sit for a few minutes to cool slightly. And now we can add this to our containers. Evenly distribute the rice into four containers on one side. On the other side, evenly distribute the chicken. For reference, these are one litre containers. I also added some coriander leaves to the rice just for presentation purposes. Once they have cooled down for a few minutes, we can put the lids on and store them in the fridge for up to one week. To serve, just heat in the microwave and enjoy. Each serving ended up being 626 calories with 45 grams of protein, 84 grams of carbohydrate, and 11 grams of fat.